Tao Hui Ba is a very important uh, uh, part of our, our life, meaning the respect that we have for each other, uh, father to son, uh, father to children, children to their parents, and also from one person to another. Tao Hui Ba. Mataka Inga. Um, that means you are related uh, and you have to accept it. Um, sometimes you do not know um, these people here and you, are, but you are related to them closely. And you have to show them that you do love them. You have to show them that you do love them and accept them of who you, who they are and get to, get to know them more and get closer to them. Salamalo ia. Appreciate, um, appreciate it. Um, you can um, use it as you wake up in the morning. Um, it's a prayer you appreciate. Um, it's, uh, it's part of the um, Tongan um, language work. It's, um, a lot of money. It's um, appreciate for the um, um, thank God for for waking up. Going 16, I followed my parents as they came. Dad had an accident in Tonga and was administered the wrong medication, burned his whole face off. Uh, so they had to bring him over. Um, for that reason. Um, yeah, so it was kind of a force for them. For me, I, I was voluntary. I put my hands up but as, a, as a young person. I wanted to come and study in New Zealand. So I came along to study, but uh, it just happened that Dad had the accident. So we all, I, I followed them, uh, leaving my, my two siblings behind. <laughs> I went to Timaru, there's a school there, it's not St. Pat's anymore, but it used to be St. Pat's Timaru. Um, and that's why I, I boarded with a family in, in Timaru, um, the best they're called, and, and I lived with them um, mm -hmm. until I finished my secondary school. I can hear you speaking in English, I can read in English, but to speak in English, I did not have the confidence, especially as a young person. Um, I wanted to be perfect, I suppose, in my pronunciation and in my sentence. And I, I would think things over before I would say something. And uh, though I understood, but to respond back, it was, it was always hard. Uh, until you get to mix with the, uh, with the boys. Mm -hmm. And there were certain words you could put to uh, make the sentence flow, but uh, words you don't use in public. <laughs> Mum was a hard worker. Um, she was good in so many things. Um, not only talking to, but um, she was good with gardening. She used to um, listen to tapes as um, um, inspirational stuff that mm. uh, she got in early on those, you know, right. listening to uh, inspirational talks by people that were recorded in those cassettes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And she would listen to that, you know. Uh, I suppose that's where a lot of her mm -hmm. uh, power came mm -hmm. from. And also prayer also, because mm -hmm. that's the other thing. Uh, we were very close to our, our church uh, as mm -hmm. Catholic and part of this uh, community. As I said, my, my English was from school, I could read, uh, I could write, but to speak, you know, I was so shy because in Tonga, uh, I was taught to say, I have, I had, uh, because I had a, a British uh, teacher that uh, taught me English. But then uh, the Americans say, you have it. It was kind of different. And then you came to New Zealand and the, different accent altogether. Mm -hmm. And then I went down to Timaru. We have our own Timaruvian language too. <laughs> in Auckland in those days, I think it was different from Timaru. Um, at uh, school that I went to, there were um, 
four of us, I think, four of us Tongans or four or five, a um, few Samoans as well. Um, mm, we were different the way, but we, I, I felt good with them. Yeah. Mm, because um, even though they, they say that they're Samoan, but I look at it, mm, Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they mentioned our, our dad, uh, he insisted on us speaking Tongan because he said without the, the Tongan, speaking Tongan to us, speaking Tongan to the grandchildren, we cannot connect with the Tongan love, he said. <laughs> <laughs> the Tongan love uh, won't uh, come through. Because, but I think he had a point because uh, conversing and connecting with the, the grandchildren um, if they did not connect, you know, the love uh, uh, is here, the attachment that they had for the grandpa. He always says, um, when you go to school, speak English. Come home, speak Tongan. Uh, and I want you to be able to speak Tongan. And when you bring your kids up, speak Tongan to them. There are a um, few words in, in Tongan that um, I can translate into English, but it, the flavour is not there, and um, I'm so grateful for, for Dad, for, for what he told us. There are certain things that it's only can come out perfect from your soul in Tongan, you know. <laughs> there are certain things you can only express it in Tongan. And to lose that, I think, is lose part of your soul also. And, and I think having been formed and the, the, the fact that they kept us speaking Tongans, and encourage us to express in, in, in Tongan. Um, he, talk, he spoke about uh, music. Um, we used to we used to sing uh, also in this church uh, in, 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 in Tongan. And not only that, but uh, the way we show our respect, the way we express our our relationship uh, with each other in, in, in Tongan. Um, I think if if we lose. Uh, the language, lose the ability to speak and the confidence uh, to speak, we lose part of, of who we are. And, and that's my fear also for our children. Once they no longer feel confident or feel welcome to, to express themselves in, in English, in Tongan, uh, I think uh, it's a loss.